Let me take it across to Mayuresh Joshi as well and chat what he's making off the market right now. Mayuresh, hi, afternoon. What is it that you're making off uh, the market's reaction to the hawkish tone in the policy? Afternoon, Ayesha. Uh, no, I think so. It is largely going to be data dependent. Uh, that is what the governor is uh, time and again mentioning. Uh, and therefore, I think the stance in terms of whether uh, RBI will support growth, absolutely yes. Uh, whether there are volatile times ahead, looking at how geopolitics is placed, uh, how our monsoons are going to shape up. Uh, uh, in that context, uh, I think data points will still be a lot more clear as we head into the next uh, few weeks and months. Uh, and therefore, I think uh, not too much of hockey starts, in my opinion, at least. Uh, uh, the uh, the reiterance of the GDP growth uh, is also very, very positive in the sense uh, uh, that the markets might have a look at how GDP numbers might actually stack up. Uh, and with better monsoons, uh, inflation might actually start heading lower, specifically food. Uh, uh, so to that extent, I think uh, a decent policy, I think, on expected lines. Uh, but Aisha, ultimately, the markets will revert back to how earnings growth are expected to take place. Uh, earnings have been a little bit softer this time around. Uh, obviously, the base of the last two years is something that we have to contend with. Uh, but again, with better monsoons, expectations of rural discretionary spending coming back, the second half recovery, at least on the consumer discretionary segments, uh, along with expectations in some recovery expected in the, the IT segment and services as a whole, along with exports, uh, should help picking, pick up earnings as we had in the second half. Right. So not to print up, I think the global events is something that the markets are a little bit uh, print up with, both in terms of the yen carry trade, which is still probably uh, uh, not done and dusted with what happens in terms of the geopolitical issues in Iran, Israel. And uh, the U.S. economic uh, data points and stats, uh, how do they evolve and ultimately the rate cut in the U.S. as well. So I think volatile times, but Indian markets are relatively better. Fast. But um, if you go by what J.P. Morgan asked today, to say 75% of the yen carry trade has already unwounded for now. So maybe not too much pressure coming from there. But talking about earnings, um, earnings reaction visible on BSC, which is 9% higher. And on the downside, you have Lemon Tree, which has also taken a cut of 9% because the Q1 earnings were weak. Um, Mayuresh, any word on the hotel space? Uh, would you still be a buyer? And this 10% dip on Lemon Tree, does it present a buying opportunity indeed? So afternoon, Anisha. I think uh, Indian hotels, uh, EIH is something that we still continue holding in our global portfolios. Uh, for Lemon Tree in particular, uh, I think uh, what has really transpired is that the uh, occupancy uh, rates have actually come down from 72% to 66% odd percent. Uh, uh, and obviously, I think if you look at their room tariffs as well, uh, they have come down from, if I'm not mistaken, 6,500 to 5,800. The revenue per available room has come down from 4,800 to 3,800 rupees. So to that extent, there is some element of stickiness that comes through in numbers. But one must also understand both in terms of their own properties as well as the managed properties that Lemon Tree has taken over. They've had a substantial addition in the last few quarters. So the ramp up is going to take time. So it's absolutely a transition phase. They are also doing, doing CAPEX in a few of their other properties. The refurbishment expenses and the percentage of total expenses has actually gone significantly higher, which is also a good sign in terms of maintenance of their properties as well. Uh, so yes, I think uh, a, a little bit below par for Lemon Tree, uh, but uh, from the space, uh, Indian Hotels EIH still remain holds at our end. And as a clear disclaimer, they remain in a good Okay, so that's a view coming in as far as, as some of these hospital, uh, sorry, uh, hotel stocks are concerned, I beg your pardon. But BSC, that stock is high by 9%. In fact, BSC and NSC both interestingly came out with the numbers yesterday. My colleague Sharad has done some number crunching as to how the numbers stack up. Let me take it across to him to get a better sense of the numbers because BSC is clearly flying away. Sharad? Yes, actually, if you look at it, a strong performance for the June quarter comes up both for BSC and NSC. But now let's look at how they actually perform against each other. That will be very interesting. First, we pick up the revenue growth and the pad growth itself. And if you look at it over here, the BSC numbers, they come in at almost 149 odd percent. And also, if you look at NSC, that comes in at 51 percent. A kind of a moderation growth when it comes to NSC. But do remember, BSC had some one-off adjustments in the base quarter as well. The, the CDSL stale stake also was there, which impacted the higher PAT numbers. Now, let's look at the margin growth and how the EPS stands. That is also something very important to track. If you look at it, margin growth was almost 600 basis points when it comes to your 
NSC and for BSC, it was 1,400 basis points. So that is a clear winner here, BSC. But if you look at the overall EPS numbers, that itself is almost three times of NSC as compared to BSC. Also, let's look at some operational numbers, the average daily turnover, how it happens for the cash market. That is something I'd like to point out. The growth, look at these numbers, 124% for BSC. NSC, this is 110%. The market share itself, of course, is skewed very highly in the cash market when it comes to NSC, but the derivatives market share, now do remember this includes FNO and it's on a calculated basis. It itself, NSE has been gaining for the last four to five odd quarters, coming in at roughly 25% of the market share. So that is something which BSC has been gaining. Now also there's some key commentary coming in for BSC, like what are factors leading to strong growth? The star mutual fund transactions, that has got, gone up 72% on a year on year basis. For NSE, if you look at it, a strong performance across segments, they also have recorded. And also the derivative segment for BSC on a low base that has been growing. NSC is likely to be highly impacted from the recent FNO curbs as well because they are the larger body going ahead and also the number of contracts are also on the higher side. Star platform, IPOs, transaction services, they are also aiding the BSC's growth. Right, okay, that's uh, some of the analysis and market data coming in. But looking at a five-year continuation of the current bull market, that's the word coming in from none other than market mogul Mark, uh, Mark Mobius. Uh, let's try and understand why he's so bullish. Here's an excerpt of his exclusive chat with us earlier today. Mark, we are calling the bull market in India as the common man bull market. It started because of the force of domestic institutional investors. The previous bull markets have been named as TMT bull market or infra bull market. If the starting point of this bull market, which is in Sensex terms, let's say was 40,000, how long do you think this bull market on the Sensex or Nifty will go before it tops out? We're looking at a five-year uh, continuation of this bull market, in my view. Of course, there'll be Corrections along the way, you know, you'll get 10%, even 15% corrections. But generally speaking, uh, this is a five-year trend. And as long as the growth rate continues the way it is going, uh, we can go on for much longer than that. Five years, you're counting today, and then five years, you're counting from the bottom, which is 2021, and then five years. Yes, yeah. It looks, uh, India still looks terrific. My question is just to get it right. When you say it's a five-year bull market, your starting period is today or your starting period is the bottom of this bull market, which was in 2021? Starting from today, I would say. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So you feel that this bull market still has another five years to go. Wow, again. Yes. Not only five years, 10 years to go. Back with closing trades right here on ET Now. Let's just... Uh... Take stock of uh, what is happening in the market right now. Well, of course, the index is currently hovering half a percent or so lower. MRF has shot up quite nicely. This trend, which is doing very well. Bharat Forge is holding up 3%. There's Alcom, Lupin. These are all names which are scaling up very nicely. Not quite the day for uh, some of the metal counters. Sale, Nalco, both of them down. Shri Cement, Ultratech, Grasim ahead of its numbers tomorrow. Grasim, that is... That's also weighing heavy. And then, of course, there's Piramal Enterprises, LTIM as well, which are also scaling down right now. But Vishal Malkan, too, on the show with us. Vishal, uh, what is it that you're making of HDFC Bank's uh, standalone outperformance within the rest of the banking pack? And perhaps that's the one because of its high weightage holding the Nifty Bank up as well. Hmm. Yeah, hi. I think uh, the way markets are poised right now, especially Nifty and Bank Nifty, I can see that Nifty has a strong support around 24,000, which uh, it uh, got tested a couple of days back also, and it might retest that level cup, maybe next trading sessions. Uh, we have gone after that uh, global market meltdown, we have gone into some kind of a consolidation zone between 24,000 and 24,300, which could be the range for next few trading sessions before we get some clear direction. Definitely the strong uptrend which we were seeing since last uh, few months, especially after election, has taken a halt and we might get into consolidation zone for a few more weeks. Okay, consolidation for a few more weeks, but what's standing out is clearly pharma. That's doing very well and while on the other hand, IT is coming under pressure. What's the recommendation within these two baskets, Vishal? 
I think pharma is is a clear winner and our performance in the last few months. And in in fact, in the last uh, couple of days when the markets were under turmoil, the uh, the pharma stocks were standing tall, standing standing tall. And uh, my best pick for pharma would be Glenmark Pharma and Sun Pharma, which have broken about their multi-year breakout uh, levels, and they still I think look for another 10 to 15 percent rise from the next uh, next few trading weeks. And as far as IT is concerned, I would stick to the the big boys uh, for value buying for long term, if not for uh, momentum trading, which is like TCS and Infosys. Okay, so that's a view coming in. In fact, Mayuresh, what is your top bet within pharma? Because a lot of ideas coming up even in the small cap, mid cap space. Any new um, names that you guys have managed to unravel? Second market space, if on any decline, is Morgan Labs. Uh, our take is. Uh, the medical equipment business, especially the glucometers and the blood pressure monitors that they manufacture, that's a huge value add because as sales evolve for these two core products itself and specifically for the glucometer, the, the strip sales is an incremental revenue that keeps on coming through and that needs a regular kind of a usage uh, in terms of uh, monitoring your glucose uh, levels as well. And therefore, I think uh, the medical devices business is expected to grow very, very decently for more than labs. Uh, the API business that uh, is getting managed, uh, they've got six blockbuster APIs uh, where the cash flows remain extremely strong. Uh, and the management is very, very good, full of introducing a few more in the coming few quarters. Uh, as they ramp up, uh, the cash flows from the existing six APIs that they are uh, managing at this juncture will ensure that the cash flows uh, remain extremely strong. And therefore, the EPS growth uh, should remain relatively higher over the next two years uh, as far as earnings is concerned. Uh, from a balance sheet perspective, I think it maintains and uh, possesses a very stable balance sheet and return ratio should improve uh, as you see a margin uptick and bottom line growth. Uh, so any pullback on Morpen Labs uh, is something that we like at market for direction. Right. Okay. In the meantime, there's all excitement around the Ola IPO listing as well. Remember, the price ban had been set at 72 to 76 rupees. It's a, a huge one because it's the first from an all EV stable uh, coming in. It's a combination, of course, of a fresh issue as well as the OFS. And it's seen quite a, a bit of subscription as well. The total IPO got subscribed almost four and a half times. Uh, just wanted your sense, Mayuresh, on... Uh, you know, whether or not at the current valuation you think uh, that, uh, you know, Ola was a subscribe from you, where you think it's going to get list and whether, you know, uh, the market will give a better opportunity, if not at these levels, to buy into this uh, particular company. Well, Aisha, I think uh, it is expected to be a decent listing for Ola Electric. Uh, having said that, I think uh, if, if it does correct, uh, I think it does present a good opportunity because the space that it is in, uh, the kind of uh, reviews that it is getting for its existing portfolio and expectations of more launches coming their way is something to probably be looked at. Uh, but valuations is very, very expensive at this juncture. So you need a pullback post-listing on this one. Uh, till that period, periodicity of time, I think a better way to play this would be the auto ancillaries. And therefore, we remain a little bit more sanguine in terms of a lot of these auto ancillary stocks, which have got exposure not just to the original equipment manufacturers as far as ICE engines are concerned, but also starting to cater to the EV mobility and platform businesses as well. Uh, let's not forget the replacement market for both these segments can also grow exponentially for these auto ancillary players over the next few years. So I think auto ang selectively becomes a very, very interesting place as a proxy. Uh, to the mainstream uh, auto companies. Okay, fair enough. We'll uh, watch out for that and the way it lists come tomorrow. It is going to be surely an interesting one. But um, I wonder what's keeping uh, the investors of Hunasa quite active today in the trading session because that stock is also trending quite a bit um, uh, higher. Yes, 8 to 9% higher on that one. Uh, the earnings I don't think are out at the moment. In fact, the earnings are expected to come out later. But what's the sense on this one, Mayuresh? It was it was a bit of a sideways move for a long time for this company. But do you expect it to now make a bit of a comeback and even Nika for that matter? So for both these stories, Anisha, I think we will wait it out because uh, earnings have been uh, relatively patchy. Uh, and you've probably not seen the consistency that one really needs to see in terms of earnings delivery. Having said that, the expectations in terms of more products uh, being launched, uh, 
product profile actually being more diversified, uh, specifically in the case of Unasa, as well as more brands launched under Nike, is something to be watched out for. But I think how's the response level coming through? What are the different mechanisms they are probably going to adopt? Uh, and the multi-channel approach that probably ensures that their volume growth probably remains very, very stable and not sticky as we've seen in the past. Uh, so I'd ideally like to see both their numbers, but our sense largely is uh, uh, that they are going to remain in a range-bound action uh, uh, for some periodicity of time. Obviously, from the lows, both these stocks have bounced back over the past uh, few months. Uh, but again, I think there will be stickiness as far as numbers is concerned. And therefore, a range-bound action is something that we perceive for both these counters going forward as well. Okay, we're going to take a very quick break on that note. Come right back. We'll continue tracking markets on the other side. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.